goodness, Phil Menzer is here, who's a professor of informatics at Indiana University, who has recently been awarded a $2 million grant to build systems that can detect online persuasion campaigns. All right, hi, I'm Phil Menzer from Indiana University, and um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about a few examples of through the memes that we've uncovered with this system um, that we have online. Please go and play with it. It's truthy.indiana.edu. And um, Mike Conover and uh, Bruno Gonzalez are sitting there, and they're among the developers of, of this system. So it's a website where we track memes coming out of Twitter. And we try to see if we could spot some signatures based on the networks of who retweets what, basically, and who mentions whom. And so um, you, know, you could look at lots of different memes. Uh, for example, you know, here's GOP, which uh, I want to highlight because it brings up the issue that has been brought up before about um, echo chambers. And in a lot of um, memes that concern politics, we observe this clearly by clustered polarized um, structure where people only tend to retweet other uh, people that they agree with. Um, so that's an interesting theme, but that's not the theme of today. Uh, so let me just show you a handful of examples. Um, here's one that Mike pointed out to me. It's, it's not in the realm of politics. It's uh, probably we would put it more in this sort of spam category. Um, and it's just a bunch of accounts that uh, promote a particular, I think, club in Atlanta. So <clears throat> the dots are all the, uh, are the people, and the oranges are the mentions. So there's just a bunch of bot accounts that keep tweeting about events and mentioning other people. And so some of them then eventually retweet, and this they use to generate buzz about it. So this is one kind of pattern that we observe. He, and now let me show you a few patterns that we've observed in the run up to the last election in 2010. Definitely truly thing. So this looks very different. It's just two accounts. And a huge edge, that blue thing is just one very thick edge between these two accounts. And that means that these two accounts kept retweeting each other. They were bot accounts, they generated tens of thousands of tweets, and all of them were promoting one particular candidate. Um, and um, you know, posting about this person's blogs and articles in the press and website, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here's another one that uh, is not quite as hugely successful, but I think it's very scary and it keeps going. It's AMPAT. It's a tag that is used to post material that is very scary, um, you know, very graphic uh, movies about beheadings and promotes the idea that uh, pretty much Obama is trying to push Sharia law in the United States and things of that sort. So very interesting. Um, here's another example. Uh, this is a bunch of bot accounts uh, that all uh, turn around this Freedomist account. Freedomist.com is a website that posts fake news. And it was extremely active, uh, and still is, in posting all sorts of, uh, it, it tends to be also another example of right wing. But we found a few examples of left wing, if you're interested. But anyway, um, during the last elections, this was very active in, in as marrying certain candidates and promoting other candidates. And there was about 10 bot accounts or accounts that were controlled by this one person who's also the person who, po who owns and manages the website. And then, of course, all of them would be retweeting. And there was an interesting pattern in which um, uh, they would all, at the same time, try to target one influential user, hoping to get this one person then to believe it because it looked like it was coming from different sources. And then if that person retweeted it, then there was a chance of creating a cascade. So it was very effective. And they got around Twitter's. Um, uh, spam detection by adding random uh, uh, characters at the end of uh, bitly shortened URLs so that they look like different URLs, but in fact, uh, uh, they were all pointing to the same sources. So this was very effective. And a reporter actually contacted this guy, and, and he freely admitted, said, yes, of course I'm doing it. Everybody's doing it. Uh, this is a re Republican activist in uh, Pennsylvania. And he's still there. Some of those accounts have been shut down by Twitter, but several have not. So still doing it. Um, and the last example is more current. It's the hashtag Obamacare, um, which is one of those that are uh, used quite actively. And it turns out that, uh, so we have this uh, uh, new tool that we just released. It's a sort of an interactive um, visualization. It's a little bit hard to see here because you can't see the, all the edges on this, on this monitor. Uh, but basically, you can see what, what are the users who are most influential that are retweeted the most, and you know, what are the patterns of propagation, and you can sort of explore and dig down and play a little bit with the data. Um, 
that particular account there that is the most active on the Obamacare um, meme happens to be the Heritage Foundation. Um, and you know, we have a few additional tools that let you see um, what other uh, memes a particular account is active promoting or discussing. Also, we try to automatically uh, detect language and do sentiment analysis and a few other things. So um, you're welcome to play with it. But he, the, uh, these are just, just a handful of examples to get us discussing. And of course, the fundamental issue is, can we detect these uh, early? Uh, of course, you know, uh, as we've seen in the previous speaker and also Taki Metaxas has done this work, you know, if you can go afterwards and you, can, you have the time to do some real legwork and, and you know, you could find out perhaps, oh, you know, uh, there was this group behind this ad. It was that paid consultant or it was this corporation or it was this particular um, organization. Um, but at that time, very often, the damage is already done, as, as Takis has shown in his work. So um, the trick is, can we detect it early? before a lot of damage is done. Um, and that's what we're trying to do, and, but we're just at the beginning of that 